Aisi. It is part of the might of God. Ni sehemu ya uh, mawazo ya Mungu. Put into another person. Ikiweka katika mtu mwingine. Through the power of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. Pitia kwa nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. So that because God cannot come in human. Na kwa sababu Mungu hawezi jitokelezea kama mwanadamu. But through the Holy Spirit. Lakini kupitia kwa Roho Mtakatifu. He put his might to our mind. Anaweka akili yake ndani yetu. Through the word of knowledge. Kupitia kwa neno la hekima. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Kwa nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. And that person na huno mtu becomes the voice of God. Anafanyika sauti ya Mungu. He start to foresee. Anaweza kuona or to see ama kusema things that are happening mambo ambayo yanatukia or the things that are going to come. Na ama mambo ambayo yatatukia. This word of knowledge. Hii neno la hekima it gives us a certain facts and information through the supernatural revelation of the Holy Spirit. Inatupatia sehemu ya ujumbe kupitia uungu. This information was previously unknown to the person. Na hii ujumbe unakuwa ya kwamba haukuwa unajulikana kwa huyu mtu. And the knowledge could not be gained by any natural means. Na ule ufahamu aungepatikana kwa njia ya kiasilia. The word of knowledge kwa hivyo neno la hekima is supernaturally imparted. Inaletwa kwa njia ya kiungu. It is supernaturally imparted. Inawekwa inapachikwa kwa njia ya kiungu. And I'm going to show you some examples in the Bible. Na nitakuonyesha mfano katika Biblia. The ministry of Jesus Christ is one example. Be huduma ya Yesu Kristo ni mfano mmoja. In the book of John the gospel chapter number 1 line number 47 to 50 katika kitabu cha Yohana 1:47 mpaka 50 we see Jesus Christ tunamwona Yesu while he was in the ministry of calling his disciples akati alipokuwa katika huduma ya kuita wanafunzi through the word of knowledge kupitia kwa neno la hekima he so philip alimuona filipo the bible says biblia yasema as they approach jesus said walipokuwa nakaribia yesu akasema now here is a genuine son of israel a man of complete integrity hapa huu ni ukweli ni mwana wa israeli aliyejawa na ufahamu line number 48 mstari wa 48 and this person asked, asked how do you know about me nathanael asked jesus replied Nathaniel i could la- see you under the fig tree before philip found you ah uh, biblia nasema kwamba na nilikuona nathaniel akamwambia umepataje kunitambua yesu akamjibu akamwambia kabla filipo hujaku hajakuita ulipokuwepo chini ya mti nilikuona Hallelujah. Amen. That is a, a very good example of the word of knowledge. Hiyo ni mfano mwema wa neno la hekima. In John chapter number 4 line number 18 to 20. Katika Yohana 4 kutoka 10 na 20. This is a story of the Samaritan woman. Huni hadithi ya mwanamke msamaria. Jesus Christ. Yesu Kristo. Through the word of knowledge. Pitia kwa neno la hekima. Knew who this woman was. Alijua huyu mwanamke alikuwa nani. And all her lifestyle. Na maisha yake ilikuwa namna gani? And to a point he said. Na kwa wakati akasema. Even the man that you are staying together with. Hata ule mwanamke mwanaume uliye naye sasa. Is not your husband. Sio bwanako. Because you has been having five of them. Kwa maana umekuwa na waume watano. That is how the word of knowledge operates. Hivyo ndivyo neno la hekima ufanya kazi. In the early church. Katika kanisa la kale. It is another example. Ni mfano mwingine. And in the book of Acts chapter number 9. Katika kitabu cha Matendo 9:1 to 9:11. Moja mpaka 11. We see a story. Tunaona adidi. Of one person by the name Saul. Kwa mtu mmoja kwa jina Sauli. We know Saul in the area of betraying and persecuting the church. Tunamjua Sauli katika eneo la kutesa kanisa. And just as his own issue business. Na katika hali zake za kawaida za biashara zake za kawaida that they don't like any other day siku ikakucha kama ile lingine but he encountered the power of the holy spirit lakini akakutana na nguvu za roho mtakatifu and he was beaten by blindness na akapigwa na upofu and in that state and situation uh, uh, in that circumstance na katika ile hali we see also another person by the name ananias kamuona mtu mwingine kwa jina ananias the bible does not record that ananias was a prophet biblia isemi ya kwamba ananias alikuwa uh, nabii but he received a word of knowledge lakini akapata neno la hekima and he saw a soul 
being bright akaona sauli akiwa kipofu the street that he was staying in na akaona yule mtaa alikuwa and also the house na ile nyumba alikuwa and what was expected of him to do na kile alicharajiwa kukifanya in other words kwa maneno mengine the word of knowledge neno la hekima is so specific in its operation inakuwa yaki Ina, inakuwa ya kuonyesha uwazi kile kainapaswa kufanya. It doesn't confuse. Uwa ileti mchanganyikiwa. I speak a prophetic word to you. Nilipok I can speak a prophetic word. Naweza nena neno la unabii kwenu. In a general form. Katika jia ya u, kawaida tu. Because sometimes prophetic utterance. Na wakati mwingine katika neno la unabii. Are not so specific to the people. Haikuangi inaelekea mtu kabisa. When I start operating through the word of knowledge. Lakini kianza kufanya kazi katika neno la hekima. I can specify the very person. Naweza tambua ni mtu mgani ninayeongelelea. I can establish the name of that person. Naweza kukuambia jina la yule mtu. I can establish the tribe of that person. Naweza kuambia hata kabila ya yule mtu. I can even establish where that person stays. Naweza kuambia hata mahali yule mtu anaishi. I can also tell you the cloth, the dressing, the dressing coat. Naweza kuambia hata zile yale mavazi ambayo yule mtu amevalia. It is so specific. Inakuwa inaeleka inalenga kabisa. In the Old Testament. Katika agano la kale. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter number 12 line number 1 to line number 14. Katika kitabu cha Samueli wa pili 12 Uh, line about line up 14 we see a story of Nathan and David tunaona mtu hadithi ya Nathan na Daudi and Nathan give a story to David na Nathan akampatia Daudi hadithi and the conclusion of that story was David was the main character na uh, mwisho wa ile hadithi kwa kwamba Daudi ndio alikuwa mwenye ile hadithi because the word of knowledge kwa sababu neno la hekima inaweza funua the things that you have done mambo ambayo umetenda now 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 and please be very careful on this na tafadhali kuwa mwangalifu ndio kwa haya prophecy unabii does not prophesy about the future uh, the past hawa aineni kuhusu mambo yaliyopita it only speak about things that are pleasant and in uh, and that can only be in conduction to the word of knowledge or the things to come inaongelelea mambo ambayo yako na mambo ambayo yanakuja kama imeandamana na neno la hekima but the word of knowledge lakini neno la hekima can reveal to me inaweza nifichulia what was what you were doing yesterday kile ambacho ulikuwa unatenda juzi jana the word of knowledge can go to the past Neno la hekima linaweza rudi nyuma. It can be present. Inaweza kuwa wakati uliopo. It can be about the future. Na inaweza kuwa katika wakati ujao. And therefore it makes the difference. Na hivyo basi inafanya utofauti. Therefore, hivyo basi every one of us. Kila mmoja wetu. If all of us we can have this word of knowledge. Kama kila mmoja uh, kila mmoja wetu anaweza kuwa na hili neno la hekima. It can be so easy for us. Inaweza kuwa rahisi kwetu. The word of knowledge has got its own distinctions. Uh, neno la hekima iko na tofauti zake. A word of knowledge is a distinct from human knowledge gained by national uh, uh, national means. Neno la hekima ni tofauti na hekima za wanadamu ambazo ni za kawaida. And I want us all of us to follow me. Nataka tunifuate. You cannot obtain the word of knowledge in books. Uwezi pata neno la hekima kwa kusoma vitabu. We are living in in, in, a, in a dispensation whereby tunaishi katika nyakati ambazo people are using psychology uh, in relation to the word of knowledge. Watu wanatumia psikolojia katika hali ka, kama neno la hekima that is not true ivo si ukweli because the word of knowledge kwa sababu neno la hekima cannot be gotten from natural means haiwezi patikana kwa hali za kiasilia there is no class that you can attend to hakuna darasa unaweza enda so that you can be taught about the word of knowledge ambapo ufundishwe neno la hekima the only available uh, class is the class of the holy spirit ila darasa iko ni darasa la roho mtakatifu it is only the, uh, the holy spirit ni roho mtakatifu pekee who can impart the word of knowledge to you anaweza chipachika neno la hekima ndani yako hallelujah hallelujah there is no college hakuna chuo there is no university hakuna chuo kikuu there is no book hakuna kitabu about the word of knowledge kuhusu neno la hekima How do then do we uh, uh, employ 
this word of knowledge in our in the scriptures tunahitaji pata ili neno la hekima katika maandiko number 1 ya kwanza the word of knowledge neno la hekima it uncovers ina, sin inafunua sin dhambi inafichua dhambi it uncovers sin inafichua dhambi it sees it has got eyes to see iko na macho ya kuona and we have seen something in book of the book of second samuel chapter number na tumeona kitu katika kitabu cha Samueli wa kwanza 12 How David killed Uriah to take over Bathsheba Jinsi Daudi alimuua Uriah ndipo sasa achukue Bathsheba bibi yake Uriah And this was refused to Nathan Na hii kafichuliwa kwa Nathan through the word of knowledge Tia kwa neno la hekima I don't want to follow you wherever you go and what you do Sitaki kukufuata kwenye unaenda na chochote unachokifanya I just need to believe in the lord that i may receive the word of knowledge naitaji tu kumwamini mungu afichue neno la hekima kwangu and i shall tell you all the things that you does na nitakwambia kile ambacho umetenda another example is the book of acts chapter number 5 ingine ni uh, matendo ya mitume 5 line number 1 to line number 11 moja mpaka 11 it is a story that we all know ni andithi ambayo nyi wote mwaijua about anania and safira juu anania na safira how they agree to go and sell their piece of land alivyo kumbaliana kwenda kuuza sehemu ya shamba yao na kuleta fedha katika nyumba ya Bwana lakini wakachukua sehemu ya zile fedha na wakachukua zile zingine wakapeleka katika nyumba ya Bwana nilikuwa nawaambia watu wa ibada ya pili Mungu aliwapenda Anania na Safira sana kiwango ya kwamba alimtumia Petro akawauliza is this all what you have sold je hii ni yote ambayo umeuza they had a chance to say no walikuwa na nafasi ya kusema la and they could have been blessed na wangebarikiwa but when they said no lakini wakati walikataa they did not lie to peter hawakudanganya petro they lied to the spirit of the lord walimdanganya roho wa mungu peter through the word of knowledge petro katika neno la hekima knew that these people were liars alijua hao watu ni wadanganyifu we need to be very careful on that lazima ukuwe mwangalifu kwa hilo number 2 ya pili to bring people to god kuleta watu kwa mungu hallelujah hallelujah this word of knowledge neno la hekima it is not meant to scatter haijawekwa ndipo sasa itawanye watu it is supposed to bring people to god inapaswa kuwaleta watu kwa mungu how do we apply this word of knowledge tunafanya kuifanyisha kazi yaji neno la hekima god may reveal to me what my wife always do behind my back mungu anaweza nifichulia mke wangu anafanya nini nyuma yangu but my application to the same lakini vile nitaichukulia it can dictate whether my family will stand ina itawashiria kama familia yangu itasimama or my family shall be drawn nearer to god ama familia yangu itasongeshwa karibu na mungu the application of the word of knowledge is very key jinsi ninavyotumia hili neno la hekima kimani ya maana Because sana this word of knowledge is to the details kwa sababu hii neno la hekima ina kila kisehemu unapaswa kuelewa and some of the details that we always receive na mmoja wapo ya zile vitu ambavyo tunapata is not applied well kama hazijatumika vyema they can break and scatter zinaweza funja na kutawanya hallelujah hallelujah how then do we apply it je tunaifanyisha kazi yaji jesus christ was only alone with a samaritan woman um, uh, yesu kristo alikuwa peke yake pale na mwanamke msamaria and he revealed everything about her na akafichua kila kitu kumuhusu and uh, as a result of that na kwa sababu ya hiyo the woman became an evangelist hivyo basi yule mwanamke akafanyika mwinjilisti to go and preach her deeds aende akahubiri matendo yake mambo ambayo yamefichuliwa kwake kwa mwana kwa mtu kwa jina Yesu kwa hivyo basi neno la hekima inapaswa kuleta katika ufalme si kugawanya ama kutenga haleluya ya tatu inapaswa kupeana mwelekeo na ushauri haleluya amen in the book of acts chapter number 9 katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume 9 mstari wa 11 we see this word of knowledge tunaona hii neno la hekima giving a specification on where uh, Saul was ikipeana mwelekeo mahali Sauli alikuwa line number 11 the lord said mungu akasema go over to the street, uh, to the street street enda katika 
njia iliyo nyooka to the house of judas katika nyumba ya juda when you get there utakapofika pale ask for a man from tarsus named saul uliza mtu wa kutoka tarsus anaitwa sauli he is praying to me right now ananiomba saa hii it gives directions inapeana mwelekeo and i give an example na nipeana mfano by my own kwake yeye There was a time I was given some money. Kuna wakati nilipewa fedha. And that money was uh, on an envelope. Na hizo fedha zilikuwa katika baasha. And uh, I went I, I I decided to go somewhere. Na nikaamua kwenda mahali. And that envelope got lost. Na basi ile baasha ikapotea. When I reached home I shared of the same with my mom. Wakati nilifika nyumbani ikamwambia mamangu. I knew that envelope that had, that had money. Nilijua ile baasha ilikuwa na pesa. And I knew the purpose of that money. Na nilijua sababu ya zile fedha lakini si kujua zilikuwa pesa ngapi nikamwambia mamangu nilipewa uh, baasha na anti na ilipotea na sijui kwa wapi na mama kaniambia hivyo basi jiandae utamwambia babako nini deep conviction in me Even basi nikaisi msukumo ndani yangu That the following day I go for a mataga somewhere Ndio siku iliyofuatia niende maombolezi mahali About 7 kilometers away from our house Yapata kilomita 7 kutoka nyumbani kwetu And that is the exact the route that I followed Na hiyo ndio ile njia nilikuwa nimetumia hiyo siku iliyokuwa imepita And the mataga dread Na ile matanga ikakawia I, I felt as if I want to go back home Na nikaisi ya kwamba niende nyumbani But the HBC reader lakini ule kiongozi wa ile ushirika requested to preach akaniuliza niubiri and because i loved to preach na kwa sababu nilipenda kuhubiri i decided to wait nikaamua ningoje and when i finished preaching na wakati nilipomaliza kuhubiri i shared my scenario or my instance nika nika nikataja ile hali yangu on how i lost an envelope jinsi nilivyopotesa baasha and two men came to me na watu wawili wakanijia and they asked me wakaniuliza young man kijana mdogo did you follow a certain route je ulipitia njia fulani and i said yes kasema ndiyo then i saw a mama nikaona mwanamke mama picking that kind of an envelope akiwa na ile baasha baasha inakaa ile but that family is known lakini ile familia inajulikana the testimony is not very light and very good ushuhuda wao si mzuri na kila mtu anamjua and i requested this muse to accompany me to the uh, to the press na nikauliza huyu mzee mmoja anifuate tuandamane naye mpaka pale kwa ule mama and when we entered the gate na tulipofika kwa ile because i did lango, not see that mama is the man who saw he or who saw her na kwa sababu si kumuona ule mama ni ule mzee alikuwa alimuona i told him nikamwambia go and say enda umwambie that that envelope is being looked for hiyo baasha inatafutwa they refused wakakataa and i felt in me i was burning by the holy ghost nilihisi ndani yangu nachomeka na roho bwana it was about a minute to eight. na ilikuwa yapasa saa mbili jioni when the mzee came to me and gave me the report wakati ule mzee alitokea na akakuja kunipea habari i told that mzee nikamwambia ule mzee your work is done kazi yako imeisha niachie mimi na Mungu wangu nikaingia kwa ile boma nikaketi nikampata mama nikampata na binti yake na kijana yake na kwa nguvu za roho mtakatifu nikawaambia nilikuwa hapa kwa hiki kijiji jana nilipotesa baasha ilikuwa na barua na pesa ndani na niko na ujumbe ya kwamba wewe ndio uliiona lakini ule mtu nimetuma ume, umekataa kumpatia pesa nikamwambia mama i can see You burned the letter. Ninaweza ona ya kwamba ulichoma ile barua. The money is safe. Lakini pesa uko nayo. She told me. Kaniambia. I gave it to my husband. Nilimpatia mume wangu. Let me just call him. Wacha nimuite. And tell me whether the money is still there. Aniambia kama pesa ziko. Please follow me uh, very care uh, uh, keenly. Nataka unifuate kwa umakini. When the mzee came. Wakati ule baba alikuja. He is a did uh, did yo. Yeye ni ule mlevi wa asubuhi saa saba na hata jioni. And mzee came. Na ule mzee akakuja. Akakuja akitetemeka. And he said, akasema, young man, 
Wewe kijana. I have the money. Niko na pesa. It's in my court. Iko katika koti langu. I decided in the morning. Niliamua asubuhi. I have a bonus for drinking today. Niko na bonus ya kukunywa leo. But while I was going, lakini wakati nilipokuwa naenda kukunywa, I found our stream ah uh, ah uh, vulika. It's full. Miti imejaa ma, mito imejaa maji. Nilipata ya kwamba zile <laughs> Come again. I saw the rivers are full. Niliona mito imefurika. And even the banks are has been uh, inaita go kufuja imefuja na imefunja kingo zake. That's the word. And I went back home. Na nikarudi nyumbani. I tried another time. Nikajaribu masaa ingine. This time I saw a lake. Nikaona mto ni mkubwa kuliko kawaida. When I decided to go uh, to look for an alternative. Wakati nilijaribu kutafuta njia badala, I found the gate has been sealed. Nikapata mlango imefungwa. And I went back to the house to sleep. Na nikarudi kwa nyumba kulala. They gave a testimony. Wakatoa ushuhuda. For the first time kwa wakati kwa mara ya kwanza years, kwa miaka mingi that he did not take beer huyo mzee hakukunywa he waited for the prophet of god alingoja nabii wa mungu and i said to that man na nikamwambia yule mzee please bring my money now leta pesa zangu basi he brought the money akaleta pesa i put my money on my pocket nikachukua pesa yangu nikaweka kwa mfuko and i asked that man na nikamuuliza yule mzee what would you like god to do for you unataka mungu akufanyie nini he, he said akasema we have an issue with our son Tuko na shida na kijana yetu. He was suffering from dropsy. Eh alikuwa anagonjeka hiyo ugonjwa. Ile ugonjwa wa kufura tumbo. Eh hiyo ya kufura tumbo. Daktari yetu anajua gai inaitagwa nini na wanatoaga maji. Yes, hiyo amesema. Eh hiyo inatoleangwa maji kwa tumbo. And I said na nikamwambia because of accepting to listen to God. Kwa sababu ya kukumbali kumsikiza Mungu. May you receive your miracle. Pokea muujiza wako. Immediately. Mara tu immediately mara tu the young man was cured mule kijana akapona hallelujah hallelujah and i left them na nikaondoka nikaenda few months down the line miezi kadhaa baadaye they came looking for a house wakakuja wakitafuta kwetu but they landed in the long house wakaenda kwa nyumba ya mbeo ya jirani only to find that the immediate house is my aunt's house Uh, waka, waka, ile nyumba walienda ilikuwa ni nyumba ya aunti yangu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Tuko pamoja. The, the word of Nuri can give guidance. Ah, neno la hekima linaweza kupea mwelekeo. It also uh, can encourage in the time of uh, uh, discouragement. Inaweza kukutia moyo wakati umevunjika moyo. First King chapter number 19. Fano wa kwanza 19. This is a story that we all know. Ni hadithi ambayo tunaijua. The good work Elijah did to, uh, in killing the Baal and the Ashloth uh, gods uh, kazi mzuri ambayo Elia alifanya kuua Baali na Asherah pose and he ran away na akakimbia and god appeared to him na mungu akamtokea to elijah na akamwambia elia to new ole elijah usijali elia i have 7000 more prophets niko na manabii 700 who i have reserved ambao hawajainamia miungu. Therefore the word of knowledge can also be used to encourage us. Kwa hivyo basi neno la hekima linaweza kutumika kututia moyo. It can be used to impart knowledge of future events. Inaweza kutumika kutupea maarifa ya mambo yatakayotukia baadaye. Acts chapter number 11 27 to 28. Matendo ya mitume 11:27 28. This is a story of a man by the name Gamaliel. Hii ni hadithi ya mtu kwa jina yake Gamaliel he saw a famine that was coming aliona a uh, ukame uliokuwa unakuja and he want the city to prepare itself na akawaambia ule mchi ujiandae it can also feel the heat and things inaweza fichua mambo ambayo yamefichika first samuel chapter number 10 okay. line number 22 samuel wa kwanza 10 22 it is agabus a uh, one of the men named agabus stood up in one of the meeting and predicted by the spirit that a great famine was coming up upon the entire roman uh, world uh, mtu kwa jina agabus alisimama na akanena aka, kuhusu uh, ukame uliokuwa unakuja katika inji na jinzi uh, inji ya warumi itakapokuwa i see that the word of knowledge can feel of the hidden things 
Inaweza pichua mambo ambayo yamefichwa neno la hekima Samuel 10:22 Samuel wa 10:22 And the spirit of the, the Lord refilled where Saul was hiding himself Na roho Mungu akapichua mahali Sauli alikuwa amejificha Then how does this gift operate Je ili hii karama inafanya kazi yaje Number one. Ya kwanza It operates supernaturally Inafanya kazi katika hali ya kiungu Because it is a uh, a uh, supernatural in character. Kwa sababu hiyo hii karama ni ya kiungu yenyewe. Number 2. Ya pili. It operates by faith. Inafanya kazi kwa imani. The word of knowledge operates by faith. Neno la hekima linafanya kazi kwa imani. You must believe what the spirit of the Lord is telling you. Lazima uamini kile roho wa Mungu anakuambia. Number 3. Ya tatu. It is not essentially focal a focal gift. Sio kitu ambayo iko na usemi zaidi however it speaks lakini inanena it is not essentially focal si haina ule usemi number 5 ya tano it may become focal when shared with the others inaweza fanyika na usemi inaposhirikishwa kwa wengine like how the samaritan woman did kama vile mwanamke msamaria alifanya she went telling others alienda akiwaambia wengine on what has been refused to her kwa kile ambacho kimefichuliwa kwake number 6 ya sita in the spirit filled christian kile mwa, kila muamini amejazwa na roho who is willing to hear god's voice may experience this gift ambaye anatamani kusikia sauti ya Mungu anaweza kuwa na hiki na hii karama qualification is that you must be born again uh, nila, ile qualification lazima uzaliwe mara ya pili you must be spirit filled lazima ujazwe na roho mtakatifu then the spirit of the lord can impart that word to you if you basi roho wa Mungu anaweza pachika ile karama kwako to all the psychologists and the counselors in the house kwa wale wazina psychologia na wale counselors wako pali hapa number 7 is very key to you ya saba ni ya muhimu kwenu it is an invaluable asset in the ministry of counseling ni kitu ambacho ni cha dhamana sana katika huduma ya counseling ushauri samani because in many times these people hide some information kwa sababu wakati mwingine hawa watu uficha uh, mambo mengine but when you are operating under the word of knowledge lakini ukifanya kazi katika uh, neno la hekima then you can know a lot of information unaweza jua ujube zaidi number 8 ya nane obedient action and response is essential kuti na ule utendakazi ni ya maana sana to the continue, uh, continuing functioning or function of this gift in one's ministry ndipo sasa hii hii hi karama iendelee kufanya kazi katika huduma you must be obedient lazima ukue mtiifu and you must respond to the same na ni lazima uifanyishe kazi obedience is very key kuti ni kwa maana number 9 ya tisa. frequently manifested in conjunction with the word of wisdom inafanya kazi pamoja na neno la maarifa this word of knowledge hii neno la hekima it work together with the word of wisdom inafanya kazi pamoja na neno la maarifa are we together tuko pamoja are we together tuko pamoja so that i i want to complete this nataka kutamatisha hili put number 7 ya 7 a word of wisdom neno la maarifa word of wisdom then what is the word of wisdom Neno la maarifa ni nini? The word of wisdom is a fragment of divine wisdom supernaturally imparted by the Holy Spirit. Ah, ni sehemu ya hekima ya Mungu ambayo imewekwa na Roho Mtakatifu. And I see that there is a word of wisdom and a gift of a uh, gift of wisdom. Nikasema kuna karama ya neno la hekima na na neno. <laughs> the word of wisdom is the ability to use knowledge for the correct purpose neno la hekima ni uwezo wa kutumia ile hekima kwa njia iliyofaa and the word of wisdom na neno la hekima it is that ability ni hule that uwezo you from the lord ambao unapokea kutoka kwa Mungu in making the right decisions kwa kufanya uamuzi ulio bora are together tuko pamoja wisdom supplies one with the immediate ah uh, ah uh, Uh, it is supplies one with the immediate wisdom to know who uh, what to say and do 
in a given situations inakupea ina hekima ya kujua unapaswa kufanya nini kwa wakati ugani this gift start at the hand of the least uh, in terms of importance ah uh, hii inasimamia mahali pa mwisho katika ule umuhimu mambo ambayo umeweka ya umuhimu it enable us to speak and act with the, with the divine wisdom inatufanyia tufanye kazi katika hali ya kiungu and thus ensures the correct use and application of other gifts na inafanya ka, ina, inafanya tu tumie karama zingine ipasavyo without wisdom bila hekima this gifting can fight one another hizi karama zinaweza pingana they can be used in the long way zinaweza tumika kwa njia isiyofaa god may reveal to me mungu anaweza nifichulia that probably my wife went somewhere to do me something ya kwamba mke wangu alienda mahali kunitendea kitu fulani but in minus wisdom lakini nikitoa hekima if you say those words in the place of so many people ukisema mbele ya watu wengi it can break a family inaweza kufunja familia but if the wisdom is applied lakini kama hekima imetumika then you can be in the position to redeem that person and to redeem that family hivyo basi unaweza kukomboa ule mtu na ukomboa ile familia then what is or what are the distinction of the word of wisdom nje ni tofauti gani ziko katika neno la hekima number 1 ya kwanza it is not a natural wisdom sio hekima ya kiasilia it is not the wisdom gained from academic achievement sio hekima inapatikana kutokana na masomo ama usomi is not wisdom gained from experience sio uh, hekima inapatikana kulingana na usoevu is not even the wisdom to understand the bible si hekima si hekima ya hata kuelewa biblia it is supernatural in character hiyo hekima ni ya kiungu iko na tabia za kiungu it is given as the holy spirit wills inapeana kulingana na vile roho wa mungu anataka it is given for a specific need or a situation inapeana kwa uh, jambo speciali ama hali speciali are we together tuko pamoja it is given for a specific need or situation inapeana kwa hitaji uh, speciali ama hitaji fulani ama hali fulani god uh, shows you where to say no and where to say yes mungu anakuelekeza ni wapi kusema la na ni wapi kusema ndio and there are so many examples in the bible na kuna mifano mingi sana katika biblia i'll give you through our uh, these scriptures you read for yourself but i'll touch on one nitakupatia haya uh, maandiko ujisomee lakini nitakutajia moja luke chapter number 4 line number 13 luka 4 moja mpaka 13 it repeats itself in the book of matthew chapter number 4 line number 1 to number 11 inajirudia katika madhayo 4 moja mpaka 11 this is the time the spirit of the lord led jesus christ to the wilderness to be tempted hii ni wakati roho bwana alimuelekeza yesu katika jangwa ndipo saka akajaribiwe and in every temptation na katika kila ajaribio the spirit of the law roho wa mungu give jesus christ the word of wisdom in response alimpa yesu neno la hekima ya kujibu hallelujah hallelujah it's like that in the book of luke 20 22 katika luka 20 22 mpaka 26 you see wisdom in application utaona hekima ikifanya kazi Jesus Christ responding to the scribes Yesu akiwajibu waandishi on the matter of paying tax Uh, katika hali ya kulipa ushuru in john chapter number 8 katika yohana 8 line number 3 to line number 11 mpaka 11 this is a story of the adulterous woman hii ni andithi ya mwanamke kahaba she was caught in the very act akapatikana katika tendo la ukahaba and these guys decided to stone her na hao watu wakaamua kumpiga mawe and she learned where jesus christ was na akakimbia mahali yesu alipokuwa and jesus kneeling down na yesu akiwa amepiga magoti and lighting some things uh, on the ground akiandika vitu katika mchanga maybe she, jesus christ was lighting inawezekana yesu alikuwa anaandika i came looking for the lost nilikuja nikitafuta waliopotea i came to save the sinners nilikuja kuokoa wenye dhambi and when he stood 
up na wakati alipokuwa akisimama he said to them akawaambia if there is anyone among you kama kuna mmoja kati yenu who have never committed sin ambaye hajawahi tenda dhambi let that person be the first one to stand this woman wacha akuwe wa kwanza kumrushia mawe huyo mwanamke the bible clearly says na biblia wazi yasema that they all freed wote wakaondoka haleluya Hallelujah. That was wisdom in Ye, application. Ilikuwa hekima ikitenda kazi. Are we together? Tuko pamoja. In Acts chapter number 6 line 1 to 5. Katika kitambo cha matendo ya mitume 6 moja mpaka 5. There are lost a problem in the company of the apostles. Kukakuwa na tukio ama shida katika kongamano la mitume. And through wisdom. Na kupitia hekima. They casted lords. Wakapiga kura. On who will be in charge? of the uh, of the corrections nani atakuwa anahusika na matoleo you can see also in the book of acts 15:28 unaweza angalia matendo ya mitume 15 and acts 27:23 to 24 na matendo ya mitume 23 27 27 27 23 24 not as i come to the end njua hili inapotamatisha The word of wisdom is promised to all Christian disciples. Neno la hekima limeaidiwa kwa waaminio wote, wafuasi wote. It is promised to us all. Imeaidiwa kwetu sisi wote. And I support that with the one in the book of Luke chapter number 21. Na natia mkazo hilo katika kitabu cha Luka 21. Line 20 uh, line 14 to 15. 14:15. The Bible says Settle, settle it therefore in your hearts ifanya katika moyo wako not meditate before what you shall answer usi usi usifikiri utajibu nini for i will give you a mouth and wisdom kwa sababu nitakupea mdomo which all your adversaries shall not be able to contradict or resist ya kwamba wote ambao wanaku wanakupinga hawataweza kupigana nawe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because we are living in time of trials. Na kwa sababu tunaishi katika nyakati za kuteswa. Don't look for information on how you are going to defeat them. Uh, usijaribu kutafuta utawashinda namna gani. In that hour of persecution. Katika ule wakati wa mateso. God will instill wisdom in you. Mungu ataweka hekima ndani yako. They will not be in a position to contradict it awataweza kuipinga ama ku, ku, kupigana nayo utafika katika kiwango cha madhayo 5 mali utasema my yes is yes ndio yangu ni ndio my no is no na la yangu ni la anything else beside that come from the devil chochote kando ya hicho kinatoka kwa ibilisi in that our of persecution katika wakati ule wa mateso if you pray to the lord utakapoomba mungu to instill the word of wisdom in you akuweke neno la hekima ndani yako then you'll be in a better position basi utakuwa katika nafasi bora while you are driving along the road wakati unaendesha gari katika barabara and the traffic officers as uh, uh, stops you na ule askari anakusimamisha demanding for something small akitaka kitu kidogo then you need to have wisdom and tell him ni lazima ukwe na hekima na muambie rightly blinds the eyes of a wise person ya kwamba hongo linafunga macho ya mtu aliye na hekima i remember telling a, a, a traffic officer those words and he was almost beating me ninakumbuka nikimwambia askari hayo maneno karibu anichape and he also ke- came from from behind and you know Nali... try all the ways to settle down this matter before it is handed over na alikuja na pande ya nyuma akasema kwamba jaribu kuse, kumalizana na hayo maneno kabla twende mbele and i told him na nikamwambia as far as it is concerned kama inaniuhusu mimi i don't have three options sina mambo matatu i have only two niko na mawili either you let me go Uache niende. Oh you take me. Ama unichukue. The that one I don't have. Hiyo ya tatu sina. He did not have any option. Sina hiyo ingine. And one of the colleagues said. Na huyo mwingine akasema. Ashiria huyu mtu atatuletea kisirani. Eh huyu mtu ni mtu wa kisirani. Amen. Amen. At that time. Katika wakati ule. God will always be giving us the word of wisdom. Mungu atatupa neno la hekima. Are you together? Tuko pamoja. 
Please bow your head. Namisha kichwa chako. Close your eyes. Funga macho yako. And tell God. Namwambia Bwana. Father, I need knowledge. Baba nahitaji fahamu. I need the word of knowledge. Nahitaji neno la ufahamu. I also need the word of wisdom. Nahitaji neno la hekima. Because we are living in the, in a dispensation. Kwa maana tunaishi katika nyakati. Where by the word of God is being tested now and then. Wakati neno la Mungu linafanywa mtiani kila wakati. How we are going to apply it? Chinzi tutakapoifanyisha kazi. Means a lot. Inafanya ina inajalisha sana Father this is my prayer upon everyone who have heard my voice Hii ni hombi langu kwa yote amesikia sauti yangu That through the uh, the generosity of your spirit Nikupitia kwa upeanaji wa roho wako Fill us all with the word of knowledge Tujaze na na neno la hekima and fill us with the word of wisdom so that we may be in a position to withstand the trials and temptations Father I thank you Baba na kushukuru and I bless your name na ibariki jina lako in Jesus mighty name kwa jina kula Yesu I do pray and give thanks naomba na kushukuru amen amen